This is behind the counter at a local Japanese tonkatsu shop. Good morning everyone, I'm back in Tokyo's Asakusa area just next to Sensoji Temple and I'm taking you behind the counter at a local Japanese tonkatsu restaurant. I am super excited for this one because you know I love fried food. Let's get this one started. Today, I'm going fryer deep into the kitchen of this Tokyo hidden gem, Tonkatsu Tonsho. Opened in 1972 in the quiet back streets of Asakusa, this shop is a shitamachi favorite among the locals in the area. It's run by a second generation owner who's carried on his father's delicious fried tonkatsu recipe, a deep fried pork cutlet coated with panko. To this day, while maintaining the shop's hometown atmosphere for all of its customers, truly capturing the essence of the neighborhood. Good morning. Is your leg okay? What happened? Oh, damn. This is Sonesan, the second generation owner of the shop, and he's usually the first one to come in. As soon as he arrives, he starts setting up the shop and then cleans before any food prep starts. Do you always ride your bike to work? Yes. Cool. Do you live around here? Yes. Oh, hello. Is he working today? Cool. How old are you? Oh, you're a student. Nice meeting you. Oh, thank you so much. So, is everything the same as your father did it? Ah, I see. What about the recipes? And the menu? So, why do you have a Filipino flag? Yeah, both my parents are Filipino, but I grew up in America. Now he makes a miso soup and then the rice, which is important as it goes with our main tonkatsu dish, so he's careful to cook it perfectly each and every day. Do you have a specific kind of rice you use? Why the balance? Of course. Here, the tonkatsu is prepared fresh only after it's been ordered, so his morning prep is usually for other dishes. Oh, his son's back from shopping. So, are you gonna take over the business? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> okay, see you later. Now he makes the hamburger patties. Although it's a pork tonkatsu shop, it also offers other items. This one has been on the menu since it opened more than 50 years ago. So, what's the most important thing you learned from your father? Have you mastered it? Good answer. So, did you think you would take over the family business? So he officially started working at the shop under his father at the age of 25, but says that he'd been helping out here and there since he was young, similar to his son. Further adding that even as a child, he knew in his heart that he would take over the family business. So right after high school, he worked various jobs at restaurants, hotels, and even at large dinner banquet halls to gain as much experience as possible before devoting all of his passion to this craft. And apparently his father didn't pressure him to take over the business at all, but simply offered him the option to continue it on. So do you have any hobbies? That's so Asakusa. Why do you like it so much? I feel ya. Hey, are you in any of these pictures? Ah, that's him. And this one is with his daughter. For sure, you must know everyone around here. Must be fun living here. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, the hamburgers coming together. He uses the shop's signature blend of 70% pork and 30% beef, which is thoroughly needed to help loosen up the fibers, resulting in a juicier and full flavor. So what does your wife do? What? She runs another restaurant? What's it called? Huh? Why? Ah, what about Tonsho? What's it named after? I see. So when did you marry your wife? <laughs> What's she like? <laughs> about five years ago, his wife came across some real estate nearby in the neighborhood and thought it could be the perfect place to start her own business. Apparently, property is hard to come by in the Asakusa area, so she jumped at the opportunity. So, what time do you close? Whoa, that's early, but you have such a large bottle keep. Intense, but still, why do you close so early? <laughs> of course, so which is your favorite bottle? This one? That's the panko used for tonkatsu. Oh, it's for me? Mmm, it's good and slightly sweet. Thanks. Now he prepares the curry. So, what do you do with your kids when you're off? Ah, oh, that's cool. Who's your team? Ah, Yokohama. Oh, the alcohol delivery is here. Hello. So, are you thinking of opening up a second shop? Yeah, I can see that one shop is work enough. Now that all the morning prep is done for the shop, he takes a break and gets breakfast. Apparently he comes here almost every day. He literally knows everyone. What's this? Interesting. It's not crowded today, huh? Oh, noted. But hey, I think you're the youngest person here. <laughs> Facts. He ordered eggs in a thick piece of toast, a very typical Japanese cafe item. Oh, that's Asahi from my last behind the counter video. Hi, Waiki san. I'm good. How's business? They've been good friends for a long time, since they were kids. <laughs> oh, the server is here. And the customers are already here. I think they're actually friends too. I guess I'm included. And more customers. Finally, the shop signature fried tonkatsu. The shop specifically uses ropaku black haired pork from Kagoshima, which is known to have a sweeter fat and tender meat. It's also high in amino acids, aka umami, which is one of the reasons why the shop's tonkatsu is irresistible and loved by many of the regulars. Is that the regular pork loin? Wow, the premium loin looks completely different. And rightfully so, since it's a different part of the pork. In fact, tonkatsu shops like this one usually offer various parts like premium loin to tenderloin called hide, which allows them to create different dishes with their own unique taste and texture. He says that how he adjusts the heat is based on his many years of experience, as it quickly fluctuates on the quantity of items being fried along with other factors. It's definitely not easy at first, but over time he's been able to master the technique. 
So if you don't already know about my Paolo from Tokyo premium Kamenati hot sauce, I've got to tell you about it because so many people love it. It's handcrafted exclusively by a small batch producer in Japan's Niigata prefecture, made with an original blend of premium kanzuri, aged six years, locally grown Carolina Reaper, and shoyu. A lot of love has gone into each bottle, and I'm telling you that there's no hot sauce in the world that has this much fire and umami all in one. And it all begins at the base of Mount Miyoko in a process called Yuki Sadashi, where locally grown red chilies are spread over snowfields to develop their natural umami for over three to four days, forming the foundation of Kanzuri's distinctly delicious flavor. You can get it at Paolo from Tokyo Hot Sauce.com or just click on the link below. And if you're in Japan, I have shops listed on the website, such as Skiji Fish Market. Also, I just released my new Kaminari hot sauce shirt in my merch shop. You can get it along with the hot sauce. <laughs> By the way, why is tonkatsu always served with shredded cabbage? Now that makes sense. So, do you work here every day? Oh, what do you do on your free time? Dance. What kind of dance? Zumba dance. Zumba? That's right. Sounds fun. Do you do anything else? Oh, how old is your daughter? I'm just... Really? What does she do? Awesome. <laughs> A little before noon, more and more customers arrive, and the kitchen starts to pick up. Sonisan looks busy, so let's go talk to some customers. Hi, so do you come here often? Wow, that's a lot. Why do you come here? Hey, what are you drinking? Damn, tonjo sake, hardcore. Do you drink while cooking? <laughs> nice. Oh, that's one of their popular items, the katsu sando. Freshly fried katsu dipped in their special sauce. That's some love right there. <laughs> so, are you a regular too? Like, how often? Wow, were you friends originally? <laughs> oh, are you broke? <laughs> Just joking, what are you eating? <laughs> you guys are so close. How long have you been coming here? Ah, I see. Do you go to the matsuris with them too? Okay, what's that? So what else do you recommend? Thanks. It's fun here. Absolutely. This shop beautifully epitomizes typical Japanese Stamachi downtown shop culture, where many of the local customers are friends with each other, and the shop itself is like a second home where you can grab a bite of food and even a drink during the daytime and catch up with longtime neighbors. This welcoming vibe touches every corner of the shop to a point where even first timers feel at home here. Oh, it seems like a big group of kids came and the regulars are helping out to make room for them. That's so kind. Hey guys, how's the food? So, what are you here for? Dope, how did you find the restaurant? 
Well, your research paid off. Excuse me, do you come here often? Oh, you're the daughter? So, do you work here? Nice, what do you usually do? So, what do you recommend? What's that? So, would you like to say anything else? Thanks! And that's another one in the books. If you want to visit this shop for yourself, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. So that's behind the counter at a local Japanese tonkatsu restaurant. If you guys like this video, help me out and hit that like button. If you guys want to help support the channel, definitely check out the merch and my palo from Tokyo Hot Sauce. And if you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bubble button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.